Hey guys, hopefully you can hear me okay out here. It's a bit windier than I was hoping for, but um, we'll give this a go and see see what happens. Uh, I'm out here at St Kilda, just north of Adelaide, South Australia, out by the uh, boat ramp. Did a real nice video yesterday out North Haven Way, sunset, beach, all that sort of thing. But um, traffic noise killed it, couldn't hear a thing. Bit of a rookie mistake on my part. Probably like this one will come out, but I'm gonna see what happens. So I thought I'd give a um, do a walk around on the uh, Falcon behind me, the old XB. Um, if you're seeing this channel, you probably know the car. Um, seen it on the other videos. If not, have a quick look through after this, and you'll see what it's all about. Um, what I do with it, what it does. Um, but I thought I'd go, I've never gone into, um, well this is the first walk around I've done, a like, proper walk around and uh, I thought I'd go into detail on the um, on the car itself, what, what makes up the car. Um, it's 1973 XB, it's a factory 302 Fairmont, so um, it's this factory V8 car, 5 litre 302 Cleveland, uh, C4 automatic and parchment trim. Um, it hasn't been that way for a very long time. Um, I brought it in 2004 off um, a friend of a friend. It's um, he built it as a drag car, basically a budget drag car with a big block and a half cage. The had an accident with the trans coming apart and uh, tore up the floor in it. So he parked it for four years or so, I think it was. And then I got hold of it. I found it while searching for parts of my younger brother's car. But anyway, so I've over those years I've pieced it together in um, various guises. It's always been white. So it's been resprayed one and a half times. Um, I'll go into that later. Uh, it started off with a stock block three um, Cleveland with a 383 stroker cast crank. But just thing naturally aspirated uh, around 11s. Um, did a really budget turbo kit with an S475 and um, cast iron manifolds, reversed factory manifolds. I did all that myself, and we ended up running nines with those manifolds with a um, billet 88 mil turbo, budget turbo on it. Um, and then we changed things up a bit. So it's had two single turbos. So about 2010 it was on the road with its first turbo setup. Uh, but now it's got the hopefully the lighting's okay for this. Now it's got the um, twin precision 7675s on it. The first gen bush bearings. Uh, they're rated for something like 1200 horsepower each. They work really really well on the size engine. This is about a 408 cube now, with an SVO block and CHI 225 heads, with a lot of work done to it. It's got a FuelTech FT600 on it. Um, that was supplied through, initially through Frank at Dandy Engines. Everyone knows Frank with his twin turbo XW. Um, and all my support and backup, tech help and everything comes from Nathaniel who now, who was at Dandies, who now runs FuelTech Australia, the Australia side of it. Very, very helpful guy. Really knows his stuff. Really good guy. Um, this car wouldn't do anywhere near what, it, near what it can do without him backing me up and um, telling me what's what. And a couple of other really good mates, of course. Goes through a Cohen power glide, two-speed power glide with a reed case into a... Um, uh, fabricated 9 inch with um, you know, full floaters, 35 spine bullet axles, all the standard gear. Um, McDonald Brothers um, triangulated 4 link QA, it's still got single action or single adjustable QA ones on it that I've had for years. The front end is the Gazard Brothers from Queensland, they do a coilover kit for this. They use AFCO, well, this one has got AFCO coilovers um, with the Gazard springs and all their bracketry and that sort of thing. It's pretty much a bolt in the kit, you can do it in a couple of hours. 
makes a huge difference to the front of this thing. Uh, still got standard arms, standard steering. Um, if I could do rack and pinion easy, I would. But uh, it's not a, as most guys with these really Falcons know, it's not a simple exercise or a cheap exercise. Um, you think I would have with everything else I've spent on the car, but um, it still does the trick. It's um, so this little 408. We've had it on the hub dyno, tuned that up down at Graham West um, in Adelaide. Damien on the keyboard with that, with the help of Nathaniel. Um, 29 psi was 1430 horsepower at the hubs, which is 1070 kilowatts. For an old 70s Falcon to be doing that and still be used on the street. Got a bit of an audience there. Fine. Um, yeah, that's that's not bad for a street car. Um, what else is there? So it's got mini tubs in it, which I've put in. Um, Andy at AdmoFab rolled them up for me and um, I fitted them myself. I fitted the um, chassis connectors it's got RHS uh, 3 mil RHS chassis connectors from basically where the front leaf spring mounts originally were through to just under the steering box at the front so the whole whole lens whole things tied together it works very well it's also got a enemies everywhere um, anti-roll bar it looks mint um, it's inside the boot the boots a mess you don't really need to see inside there um, so Andy at AdmoFab, Andy and Gav, they do all the fab work that I can't do. So like they do the welding, TIG welding on the anti-roll bar, um, I fitted it. But the roll cage, it does have a full roll cage in there. It's not currently, I've just like, literally within the last two hours taken the front half of the cage out. But um, the it's a full six point bolting cage. And they usually have a race seat in there, which I've taken out because I'm using it on the street at the moment. So that's the FuelTech 5600 dash. It's a touchscreen dash. That thing has all the features you could ever want for drag racing. It's um, traction control, boost control, which cheeky little CO2 bottle in there for my boost control. As well as having all your tunes on your laptop, you can store five in the ECU and um, sit through that while the car's running, change the tunes. You can also do tuning via the dash while it's running, which is a pretty cool thing. It's got your stereo in there, I've got a stereo in this thing. I'm a big fan of stereos. Uh, FG Falcon seats, leather seats. And in here, you know, you get that follow there. That's a, um, I think it's a chiseled performance from memory. It's a 3,000 horsepower rated uh, water through air intercooler. We chuck some ice in the tank in the boot and um, we can get it down to near freezing. Um, we've had like four degrees, three degrees uh, temps in the, um, we've got a temp sen uh, sensor in the tank. And um, yeah, and whatever the tank is, is what the air is at the throttle body so um, you can see why that makes a huge difference uh, these two hoses these two pipes here the pipe over here that's from the turbos and that travels through excuse the mess into the intercooler and then this other side coming back through that goes up into the firewall and into the throttle body run-of-the-mill TCI shifter transbrake um, very cool. I haven't got the stickers on it yet, but that's a fuel tech switch switch panel. By this button, I can scroll through the different dashes. Uh, that's my data logger button. If I'm not using the dash one or the um, automatic one, these um, I haven't set them up yet, but that's all through a CAN bus network. So the cage was by AdmoFab. The fuel cell ice tank combination is AdmoFab. 
the turbo bracket tree, the little frames that hold the turbos, that's Admo Fab. Um, sheet metal work on the towers is Admo Fab. Um, there's some floor work by Admo Fab. They've pretty much touched everything in the car, possibly inappropriately, I don't know, because anyway, we won't go there. Um, um, they've had a hand in a lot of this car and suspension tuning, that sort of thing. Down took ages to get to a 8.9 and then we started playing with the suspension. Um, and we actually took power out to get it down the track and went quicker. It went from an 8.9 to an 8.4 and that was with um, Andy and Gav's um, assistance. We do a lot of work with time-based boost control on this thing and the fuel tech. And, um, Working that, working the 60 foot traction control, that sort of thing. We've got it down so far to an 8.1. That run I stuffed up and I only went 168, but a few days earlier I ran an 8.5 with um, pedaling it and it went 175. So it's done 8.1 and 175 mile an hour, just on the same pass. So the car's got the potential to do what I want to do, it just needs the driver to sort of shit so out. Those passes were on Drag Challenge, Street Machine Drag Challenge, if you don't know what that is. Uh, drag Challenge, it's the same as what was based on Drag Week in the States. Um, five different country tracks in Victoria, well Melbourne, and then uh, Portland, uh, Mildura, Swan Hill, they all get thrown in there. Eighth mile tracks, quarter mile tracks, and then back to quarter. So I've done that four times and uh, completed four of them. Admittedly, we have hurt heads, we have changed head gaskets, we have hurt fuel pumps, all that sort of thing. But um, compared to some guys, we get off quite lucky. So it's always an adventure. But if you look up Street Machine TV on YouTube and um, uh, or just Drag Challenge. There's plenty of vids on there, there's like movie length videos on there as well as day to day videos. So I'll cut that one off there guys, um, just wanted to give you a reasonably thorough um, walkthrough of, of the Falcon. The uh, end goal with the car is to run a 7.9 driven to and from the track, which uh, it's got the power to do it, just doesn't have the driver at the moment, um, I kind of let it down in that regard. But uh, the moving on from here, I'll be doing um, most, well, the next few videos will probably be doing as my truck, um, trying to go through those two, um, between these two, for a little while, it's gonna be more focused on the truck, unfortunately, for the good guys. I do have another video coming up on this one um, soon, hopefully if all goes well. The, um, it's gonna be off the road for a little while. Um, with the whole uh, situation in the world at the moment. Travel is a bit tedious and a bit hard. Um, I do travel for work and I have to quarantine for periods of time so I'll be heading back to work soon. And uh, I'm not sure when racing will be starting again or anything so I might do some work on it here and there. Um, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, if you're still here watching this till the end of the video thank you very much for hanging around thanks for having a look and uh hopefully i'll see you guys soon cheers